Hey everybody, let's talk about um, how to analyze some dynamics problems. Problems about forces and Newton's laws. The way we do it is we use something called a free body diagram. Um, very common practice no matter who's teaching you physics and here's how, here's how I do it. Here's a situation where I'm, notice it's not a question, it just describes the situation. A hockey puck is sliding across the ice. We want to draw a free body diagram. A free body diagram is a representation of the forces acting on an object. Alright, so um, here's the object. We're not getting fancy at all with any structure or, or shape or size of the object. That does you no good. Um, so here's this object sliding across the ice. If you want to draw, there's the surface of the ice, fine. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, what forces act on this object? Well, in our previous video, in lesson two, um, you, we talked about the fact that we've identified five forces. There's weight. There's applied. There's normal, there's tension, and there's friction. And we use the goofy mnemonic, I want my forces. You want to identify all the forces acting on an object. So, here's the puck, what forces act on the object? Does the object weigh something? Well, sure it does. There is a gravitational force that the Earth exerts on this object, and that force um, well, you should get used to writing that force as m times g. The puck's mass times the gravitational field strength of the Earth, or Earth's gravitational acceleration, if you prefer that. Um, okay, that's one. Is the puck being pushed? Well, it says it's sliding across the ice. Does that mean it's being pushed across the ice? It doesn't. All right, you can imagine taking a puck, sliding it across the ice, and there it goes. You don't have to keep pushing it. We'll get more into that soon. Um, normal force. Is there, well, normal force comes from contact with surfaces. Is this object in contact with the surface? Well, it certainly is. That's the surface of the ice. And the rule is that the surface exerts a force perpendicular to the surface on the object. So there's that normal force. Tension. Are there any ropes attached? There are not. Friction. Is there friction? Well, maybe a little bit. It is ice, but, you know, I mean, maybe we can say there's a little bit of friction at least. Okay? Okay. Now, the purpose of drawing a free body diagram is not just for fun. It's so you can run some analysis of a situation. It's so we can write what we call net force statements in either the x direction <coughs> excuse me or the y direction we're going to use a coordinate system right now that says those are the positive x and y directions respectively and so net fx the sum of all the forces in the x direction is friction force in the negative direction now what do we do with that what is the net force on an object equal to? Well, according to Newton's second law, net force is ma. That comes from Newton's second law that says the acceleration of an object is proportional to the net force applied to it and inversely related to its mass. We usually write that in a more conventional form, maybe like that, which is what we're doing here. And we don't necessarily have to write net force equals ma. What we do is identify what those forces are. In this case, there's only one in the horizontal direction. It happens to push in or point in the negative direction. So we're done. If we want to write a net force in the vertical direction statement, well, what we have is a normal force pointing up and mg pointing down and this sum of all these forces, watch, I can even do that if I want to indicate upward, equals ma vertical. Fair enough. You must be able to account for direction when you write net force statements. It's a must. Okay, let's try another one. 
object falling under the pull of gravity experiences a frictional force of air resistance. Free body diagram looks like this. Here's the object. Well, does this object weigh anything? Sure it does. There's a force mg. Uh, okay, we got that. Is it being pushed? No. Except maybe by gravity, but we've already got that at mg. Mm, so, any surface contact? No. Any ropes attached? No. Any friction force? Yes. How big? I don't know, but it says there's some. So, we can say friction force. Some people might call that a drag force, but friction is fine. Net force in the x-direction? Well, there aren't any. So, none. Net force in the y-direction? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I might say this. I might say mg minus the friction force equals may. And what I've done there is said, I've said that this way is the positive direction. And that's okay. You can choose whatever direction you want to be the positive direction. And the nice thing about doing this is this object will only ever accelerate downward. So why not call downward the positive direction? Because downward's the direction this thing accelerates. All right, that can be useful in a lot of cases. So if you know for sure what direction something will accelerate, you might call that the positive direction. Like here, I might have said, why don't I just make left positive? The only force in the horizontal direction is always going to be to the, you know, in this case, to the left. So I could have said that's the positive direction. I chose not to. And again, you can choose as long as you're consistent with your application of directional choice. Okay? All right. Shopper pushes a cart. Free body diagram. You got one of the cart there? Uh, let's see. The cart weighs something. Mg. Um, pushes. Ooh, the, this thing's being pushed. I'll do an applied force like that. The cart certainly on the ground, so the ground pushes up on the object. There's no ropes, no tension. We can assume there's some friction. We don't know how big. All right. Net force in the x direction uh, using a standard sort of directional orientation, I would say A minus the friction force is MA in the x direction. N minus MG equals MA in the y direction. Not so bad, right? Um, that's just like the last one, except with a pull instead of a push. I'll skip. Here we are. Let's get to this one. Towing a blah, blah, blah suitcase across the ground, but there's a f strap that pulls at an angle, right? So situation looks like this. Suitcase, strap, person with the pulling. Yeah? So here's my suitcase, little dot. What forces act on the suitcase? Well, the suitcase definitely weighs something. Mg. <coughs> Excuse me. And that force always points straight down, no matter what, straight down. Um, no pushes here, so no applied force. Normal force? Yep. There's a normal force. There's surface contact. And that normal force points perpendicular to this surface by definition. Is there a tension? Yes, this is being pulled this way by that strappy thing. So there's a tension force. Is there friction? Sure, it doesn't say there isn't. So friction by definition must point parallel to that surface. Resists this motion. <coughs> Excuse me again. It's annoying. Now, net FX. The deal here is that tension force doesn't push or pull only in one direction. 
or I'm sorry, I should say only, it doesn't push or pull only in the x or the y direction. So what we should do at this step is identify, and that quite literally means draw components of tension Tx and no, no, in green, no, not in green. How about in black? I guess and Ty. I noticed that I made the size of those vectors a very re well the right size. It would not be right. I don't know why I even do this. If there's a force, the component of that force that points to the right is not that big. The component that points upward is not that big. This vector goes out that far to the right. This vector goes up that high vertically. So the correct components are that and that. That's a very basic skill that you should have. Let me get rid of that stuff. Now that we have our components of T identified, and we said there's an angle theta here, right above the horizontal, now we can write our net F statements. So, in the X direction, what we have is the horizontal component of T and the friction force. In the vertical direction, we have uh, a normal force pointing up, a vertical component of T pointing up, mg pointing down, equals may. What do you say? All right. What you will do, the next step, is you will express how big is Tx in terms of T and theta. Well, Tx, we do T cos theta. If you need a refresher, go back to the last video. Minus the friction force equals max. When we do our vertical, we say n plus, well, ty is t sine theta minus mg equals may. Okay, so when there are forces that push or pull at angles, you will, you must break those forces into components, use the component of the force that points either horizontally or vertically, and then use trigonometry to express the size of that component in terms of the whole force and the angle. Okay? Okay. Um, now, what I haven't said is in a lot of cases we actually know, we might know what, um, what AY is. Or we might know what AX is. Ooh, look, look. Constant speed. Wait a minute. That means it's not accelerating at all. All right, here's an object on the ground. That's not going to accelerate upward or downward. So we might actually know the value of, M, of, of A in one, or other, one, or one direction or the other. I'm not bothering with that yet. The important part is that you can construct these net force statements. And we'll talk more about how to use them when we, when we get into some more detail. Okay? Okay, people. Happy free body diagramming. <laughs>